Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Kubus Burgess. I'm the Managing Director of NetCB, and I really would like to welcome everyone this afternoon uh, for joining us, especially um, uh, our panelists from LSIT, Collective Synergy, and NetCB. And a special thanks um, uh, to Derek uh, Melber, also from LSIT. His day is actually starting today. Um, we have quite an interesting session this afternoon for you. Um, I would like to hand over to Hendrik De Brain, who is our Director of Operations, as well as our Technical Lead on Cybersecurity, who will explain where exactly LSIT is in our, uh, where we position LSIT in our solution stack. Over to you, Hendrik. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. Um, yeah, so I've just got one quick minute to, to, to run by this. So as a business, NetCB analyzed uh, the various stages of a typical cyber attack and uh, you know, as it's known, the cyber kill chain. And from there, we started to identify um, key technology leaders uh, that can assist us and our customers in addressing each and every one of those, um, those areas of the cyber kill chain. LSID is the, the most prominent and critical component of our Active Directory security portfolio. And uh, I truly believe that you know, in the current time of daily cyber attacks and, and the increase in insider threats for, for all our organizations, it really is a, a must have. So uh, from here, I want to introduce Lauren from Collective Synergy. Uh, they are the distributor in South Africa. Thank you, Corvus and Hendrik, and welcome everyone. My name is Lauren Laville. I'm representing Collective Synergy today. Um, as Hendrik mentioned, we are the distributor for the ELSID product in Sub-Saharan Africa, and we work very closely with NetCB as one of our gold partners. Just a few logistics. If you would like to ask any questions, kindly post them in the Q&A and we will answer them at the end of the session. This webinar will be recorded and we will be sharing the link with you as well. We are fortunate to be accompanied by Derek Mulber in our webinar today. Derek is a Microsoft MVP and is the technical director of LSID in North America. Derek educates and evangelizes Microsoft technology, focusing on Active Directory, group policy, security, and desktop management. He has helped administrators and security professionals in over 30 countries, speaking to and educating them on how to be more efficient and how to secure Active Directory and Azure AD. So Derek, thank you for joining us and over to you. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, Kobus and Henrik, um, I really appreciate you guys um, having this webinar and um, it's obviously a pleasure to speak as I always like to speak. Um, I wanna thank everyone for attending. Um, I know it's difficult to step away from work um, so it, it's really an, a, a pleasure to have you here. Um, I've actually presented this information a couple of times and it's always gotten um, really good reviews in terms of um, the information. So I hope um, you, will, uh, you also will appreciate some of the information. And really what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be focusing on, um, of course, Active Directory, um, but we're gonna be talking about a concept around attacks and attack pathways. Now, you may or may not be familiar with this concept of attack pathways, um, but really attack pathways are what the attackers are leveraging. So one of the things that, that I've really been trying to evangelize recently is the idea that we need to start to think like the attacker instead of trying to think like the defender. Because if we can think like the attacker, we actually can look at things that the attacker will look at and actually secure some of those areas before the attacker can get there. Now, just as kind of a fill in for what Lauren said, um, I am the technical director um, at here at Alsid. Um, and um, I had to update my slides right before this presentation because about three weeks ago, um, I got my 16th MVP. Um, and that is always something that I look forward to every year. Um, keeping my MVP status is, is something that is um, very important to me um, because really what I do with that is I, I, I help the Active Directory group policy and uh, security community. So 
Um, I have been an MVP over the last 18 years. Um, I have extensive um, speaking experience traveling around the world. Um, over the last six years, I've, I've been to about 25 countries a year, actually. Um, and I was actually traveling quite a bit um, to South Africa, um, to Johannesburg and Cape Town. Um, I'll be honest, Cape Town was more for the enjoyment of um, the water and, and Cape Town is just fantastic. Um, but of course, it was always great to get to Johannesburg and do presentations as well. Um, as kind of a final thing on this slide of what's important, um, that is my email address. And if you do have any questions, technical questions, whether that be directly about what we're pre presenting today or really anything else around um, Active Directory, group policy, um, security, or really anything else, you know, it's part of my responsibilities as an MVP to help um, the Microsoft community. So if you do have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, also, um, I am pretty active on um, Twitter and LinkedIn, and I really use LinkedIn as a way to communicate um, information, um, share information. You know, we, we receive so many emails, and it's really important to have a avenue that we can communicate and share ideas and, and trends and things that are going on, and I really leverage that in LinkedIn. So anyway, that's a little bit of information about me, and let's get started with our content. So what we're gonna do today is we're first of all gonna talk about the, the core of Active Directory and why the attackers are going after it and why it's so easy that they are getting in in these attacks. And then we need to talk about what they're actually leveraging um, during the attacks. And we need to talk about the process that the attackers are taking. Again, if we can think like the attackers, we have a better advantage in actually protecting our environments because once we start evaluating what the attacker is doing, we can be one step ahead of them. And then we need to focus on some of the solutions that I find in most organizations. And those solutions would be um, mostly SIM solutions and AD monitoring solutions. And in my opinion, these solutions are, are valid and needed because they provide a certain view of the environment but they are missing. There is a gap when we start looking at overall security um, and we're going to be filling that gap and we're going to be filling that gap because we're going to be talking about misconfigurations and attack pathways and the concept of misconfigurations and attack pathways is a very, very, very important aspect of today's securing Active Directory environment. Um, even even this morning, I woke to some some different concepts that were being posted and discussed on LinkedIn about this. And um, I'm going to continue to um, talk about these. And um, I think we should all start to think a little bit differently. So if there's one challenge that I have for you today, if you haven't heard of this concept of misconfigurations and attack pathways, I'm just going to challenge you to really think out of the box and um, and and think about the things that I'm going over today. So if we discuss, first of all, you know, why Active Directory? Why, why are the attackers going act after Active Directory? Well, first and foremost, AD hasn't changed, right? It, it's the year 2020. Um, if I, my calculations are correct, um, Active Directory has been around for 20 years. So, you know, 20 years is a long time for a, a network operating system such as Active Directory. And you, you know, if you think back when your AD was installed, and, and this is usually back in the 2003 to 2006 timeframe, and then you've upgraded since then, you know, security wasn't an issue. I mean, we weren't concerned about insider attacks. We weren't concerned about some of the processes that today are being leveraged in the lateral movement and privilege escalation attacks. And, you know, we, we didn't even know about some of the processes. You know, AD was new. We were just trying to get it up and running and make sure we organized it correctly. And m many of us over the years have spent most of our time re-architecting the structure of AD, not really considering the details. But if we really think about Active Directory and how it was built, it was actually built with some insecure concepts. You know, if you think about all of the authentication protocols that are supported, I mean, LAN Manager is still supported in Active Directory. LAN Manager was created for Windows for Workgroups. 
That is a long time ago. And I'm certain that no one listening on this webinar still has any windows for work groups. Now, if you actually have the, the um, insulation disks for insulation uh, for, for Windows work groups, you probably can sell those for quite a bit of money. But, you know, we don't run those OSs anymore. You know, if you look at the privilege control and some of the processes, you know, SD prop, security descriptor propagation, and service principal names, these were things that, that just happened in the background in Active Directory, and we didn't even think about them. They just happened. But of course, the attackers dove in and they looked at some of these things. And again, as I mentioned, we trusted the user. We really didn't think about the insider attack. So these are some things that, that AD kind of was built upon that I'm finding as I talk with different organizations around the world, we're really not differing our view on this. And this is really where we need to think differently. Now, if we look at the actual attacks themselves, the idea of who is attacking us becomes very important. Now, if we just look at the makeup of an insider, right? An insider has read access to Active Directory because they have an account in Active Directory and by default, everyone can read Active Directory and they have network access because of course they need to authenticate. So they have the perfect recipe of attacking Active Directory. Now we're gonna get more into, you know, why does read access provide that access but of attacking, but it does. Now, when we talk about the outsider, well, the outsider has found it very easy to get into the endpoint. And I think we all agree that the attackers are going after the endpoints, right? The attackers aren't going directly after domain controllers to begin with. They need a way in first. And unfortunately, our employees are not really the most proficient at security and the attackers have found different ways to get into the endpoint starting with mostly phishing attacks and then they get privileges and then boom now they have read access and they have network access so this is really what is happening in our environments and we need to think about this now if we kind of break this down a little bit further you know what the attackers do first and foremost is they prey on our users and they have found ways that users absolutely don't pay attention to what's going on whether it be you know email blasts and they're going to click a link or they're going to actually put something on a website in some kind of a banner ad and they're going to click that there's so many different ways that the attackers are getting into the endpoint so they get into the endpoint and then what they do is they find different avenues to get into the machine to get local privileges. Now, once they get local privileges, they're now doing a variety of things. And actually, um, I wrote a um, kind of a threat analysis for Q2 in 2020, and I really focused on this different ways that the attacker was getting into the environment. And what the attacker is doing is they are dropping payload, so they're dropping payloads such as Bloodhound and other recon tools directly on the endpoint. And then also what they're doing is they are throwing virtual machines on these endpoints. So the virtual machines are running and they're bypassing any endpoint security. So these are different things that the attackers are doing once they get local privileges. And they only need one machine. That's all they need is one machine. They recon and then once they recon, they know exactly where to attack Active Directory. Now, this is what I'm talking about. The attackers are doing recon on Active Directory before they attack. Why? Because everyone has security solutions that are looking for these anomalies. They're looking for these odd behaviors that are going on, whether that be through AI, whether that be through you know, SIM solutions and you're looking for correlations. It doesn't matter, you're looking for these things. But what is happening is the attackers know exactly where to attack and they look like normal users. They look like normal processes. So if the attacker can look like a normal user or normal process, obviously a SIM isn't gonna notice that. An AD monitoring solution isn't gonna notice that because the attacker looks normal and the attacker is always going to want privileges the attacker wants to be in a privileged group the attacker wants permissions specifically inside of active directory and through group policy right group policy for ransomware is a golden key it's it's perfect right 
if, if I'm the attacker and I can get into group policy with privileges, I'm going to distribute my ransomware through group policy. It's happened over and over and over again in all of these attacks over the last year, specifically in 2020. The, the number of phishing attacks has gone up more than double. The number of overall attacks has more than doubled in 2020. Privileges are also wanted with user rights. So when we start thinking about all the different ways that someone can get privileges in Active Directory, every one of them is a way that the attacker is trying to get into our environment. So if we kind of see what the solutions are that are out there today, you know, zero through four on the cyber kill chain is really the endpoint. Right, and so those endpoint solutions are out there, and they're doing the best they can. Um, you know, antivirus, love it or hate it, is needed, um, but certainly an antivirus isn't going to stop an attacker getting into an endpoint. Um, so, really, where we at Allsid focus is in five through eight. This is where Active Directory lives, and if you notice, you know, five is lateral movement, and seven is privilege escalation. And this is really what the attacker is going after. And I actually wrote a post the other day on LinkedIn because I, you know, I was really thinking about all the different solutions that I keep hearing about. When I talk with, with administrators and security professionals, they always say, yeah, we're going to do a pen test next month. Okay, a pen test is great. But guess what? A pen test is valid for that day and that day only. That's it. Because a pen test is a point in time. So unless you're doing pen tests every day, you really can't glean much from that except for, gosh, we need to fix security. If you look at compliance and audit solutions, such as AD monitoring solutions, again, these are mostly looking at security logs. If I'm looking at a security log, hasn't the task or event already occurred? Of course it has. The only way that something can be logged to tell you something happened is for something to already happen. It only makes sense. If you look at SIM solutions, again, SIM solutions, first of all, are usually looking at security logs. So they're looking at something that's already re happened. This is a very reactive way of evaluating information. It's already happened. Also, the thing that I'm hearing over and over and over again, especially with the uptick in attacks, is the number of events has more than doubled. So the analysts are overwhelmed. And if you're trying to now look at twice as much information, you're gonna miss stuff because the SIM is only as good as the correlation and the information that is feeding to that analyst. And the analyst only has so much time in the day to analyze that information. So what I'm hearing is that the volume of events is really fatiguing the security teams. And then we get into agent-based solutions. And agent-based solutions really can do more, but when we start talking about large organizations, and I'm gonna say large here is if you have 50 domain controllers or more, even 25, do you really want to install agents on every domain controller and then maintain them? And then by the way, when you have an agent installed, guess what? That agent has privileges on your domain controller. So now that solution becomes an attack vector. Do you really want that in your environment? I'm hearing over and over again, that is not desired. Well, it's not required either. So what we need to do is we need to think out of the box. And we need to start thinking about what is possible. We need to start thinking about what is the attacker looking at? So here's a small list. This is a small list of what I am seeing that the attackers are really looking for. They're looking for the low hanging fruit. And when I investigate these organizations, I am finding that these settings are in every organization, everyone. It doesn't matter if they have 200 users or 200,000 users. Every time that I am investigating an organization, I am finding that these areas in Active Directory are wide open, okay? So what am I talking about here? What, what are these things on this list? Because you may or may not know what these things are.
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my Active Directory environment, and I'm going to kind of walk you through what I am seeing with regard to these um, misconfigurations. Now, this is the interface for Alcid, and within the interface for Alcid, you actually see quite a bit of these details through what we call these indicators of exposure. But I'm going to tackle the first one, which is service principal names. So I'm going to come in here to the service principal names, and you'll notice that there's one user, James Bond, which has a potential service principal name that's going to be used as an attack. So here you'll see that this user, James Bond, is set up to be the SQL Server um, service account, right? Now, if I jump into Active Directory and I actually go try to find James Bond, how do I see this actually within Active Directory? Well, I'm going to go to James Bond. <clears throat> I'm going to look at James's attributes, and I'm going to come down here to Service Principal Name. And you'll notice right here that James is configured for a Service Principal Name. Now, these SPNs are um, needed, right? They're absolutely required. But let me tell you a couple of, of use cases that I've seen over the last two weeks with this. About two weeks ago, um, someone installed Alcid and they found that they had the administrator, the default administrator of Active Directory had four service principal names, SPNs. Now, this means that when whoever installed Active Directory used administrator to set up the services that run these service principal names. There were four of them. Three of them they haven't had in the environment for 10 years. For 10 years. So that means that they had an account that had privileges, that had three SPNs that were just sitting out there that any attacker could look at and they could leverage it. Now, the way that this particular attack works is the attacker can actually go in and request the Kerberos TGT from these accounts and they can offline Kerberos them and now they can have access as an administrator. It's that simple. So these are some things that we really need to look at. And they're not difficult to pull out, it's just we forget. We are trying to keep our organization going so we don't look at them. And the other thing is, you know, one of the things I didn't mention is an audit. Audits happen all the time, but an audit is only good for a point in time. You run those reports, you give it to the auditor, and a month later, the auditor gives you a report. Well, a month later, that report is worthless because who knows what's happened in the environment over that time. Now, what else are the attackers looking at? Well, let's jump back into my environment and let's look at something else. Now, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch from SPNs and I'm gonna look at Kerberos delegations. Now, with Kerberos delegations, there's actually two different types. There's one for a user and one for a computer. They're similar in use, but they're totally different in how they're configured. Now, let's focus on this computer delegation. Now, you'll notice that I have two computers that here are basically flagged that they have insecure delegations. Now, computer delegations have changed a lot over the 20 years in Active Directory. They started off being very insecure, and now you can lock them down pretty tight. But what I find is that even though you can lock them down, most organizations don't. Now, this is showing you, also it is showing you, that these two computers can be an issue and the, the attacker can impersonate the identity. But is that really true? Well, let's go look at an attack tool and let me show you. Now, this is a tool called Bloodhound. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Bloodhound is actually being delivered as payload in many of these attacks. Um, Bloodhound is actually kind of near and dear to Alcid because Bloodhound um, is a tool that was created after one of our co-founders wrote a thesis for this. So, um, you know, a lot of what you have in Alcid is also Bloodhound, but there, Bloodhound has a lot of, I guess, limitations. It's manual. Um, it, forces you to look at every view differently. You have to analyze every view. It, it can't communicate in alerts and it can't communicate into your SOC. And Alcid does all that. So if you're familiar with Bloodhound and you love what it does, you really need to look at Alcid because it does what Bloodhound does 24-7, 365 with alerts. 
So anyway, we'll get back to this. So you'll notice here that I'm looking at unconstrained Kerberos delegations for computers. And right here are those two computers that Alcid was talking about. Now, the reason that Alcid is flagging these is because you can see that they are one step away from domain admins. So this would be an easy attack for the attacker. But if you follow the recommendations that are directly inside of Alcid, that's right, Alcid is giving you recommendations on how to secure every single misconfiguration. So if you follow those recommendations, you can go back into Active Directory, which is where I am now, go to the computers that have the misconfigurations, configure them to be secure, and now you are eliminating those attack pathways from the attacker. So notice here, those computers go away. They're no longer an attack vector. Now let me prove it to you from the attacker standpoint. So if I come back here to the attacker's view, again, it's manual. They have to manually re-enumerate AD. But after they enumerate AD, they can pull the information directly into Bloodhound. And now when they view the Kerberos delegations, those computers are gone. So this is the point of attack pathways. This is the point of Alcid. This is looking at attack pathways. And again, we look at hundreds of these. Alcid is in essence looking at all of the relationships of users and their attributes, group membership, ACLs, user rights, um, ACLs, delegation and active directory, group policy, all of these concepts around security are being evaluated by the security engine in real time and alerting you to these things. So these are the areas that we need to start looking at. This is what the attacker is looking at. So if we can actually be one step ahead of the attacker, now we can actually secure things so when the attacker gets there, they have nothing to attack. Now, this other area that I have on my, on my list is something that I've paid attention to for years. But I'll be honest, every time someone gets ulcid in their environment and this particular indicator pops up, they always ask me about it. And I wanted to at least mention it to you. And it's the fact that you can set a user account to have a password that's not required. So let's jump back in and let me show you where this is. So here, if I look at all of my indicators that have been triggered, um, I have account that might have an empty password. So it doesn't mean it does have an empty password. What it means is it can have an empty password. So you notice here that this account has password not required as part of user account control. Now, if we dive into Active Directory, I'm gonna show you how you can see this yourself directly on the object. So I'm gonna come back here to the object editor for Adam, and I'm gonna come down here to user account control, and you will notice that user account control has a lot of flags. This one right here is password not required. In every instance, the administrator says, I have no idea how that was configured. And at first, it really doesn't matter how it got configured. The reality is you need to secure it, okay? Then you need to find out why it's happening. And it could happen for a variety of reasons. Um, I would say that about 10 years ago, I did an audit for an organization that had about 10,000 um, users. And 5,000 of the users had that flag set. And come to find out their provisioning solution, which wasn't Active Directory users and computers, was actually setting that flag. So many different things can happen with that. And these are things that you need to start to investigate. Now, you also have to worry about other things um, for misconfigurations, not just for users and groups, but also for objects themselves. And in this case, we potentially need to look at, let's say, Active Directory Delegation or GPO Access. Now, when we start looking at AD Delegation and GPO Access, this is where we need to start diving a little bit deeper. Now, in, in my view, there are some things that are very important with regard to um, 
to Active Directory security, which you need to be able to investigate. And these are two, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually show you these things when we jump into kind of the demo at the end of, of some of the other things that are important for Alcid. Um, but these are some areas that you really need to investigate. Now, what are the attackers leveraging? Well, they're leveraging everything that I just showed you and more. And if we look at some you know, common malware that usually has been you know, re backward engineered to find out what they're doing. You know, Ryak is something that's, that came up, it went away, and now it's kind of back again. And if you kind of model what's happening here with the kill chain, it's pretty obvious. What they do is they, they basically get into the endpoint and then they get into the endpoint to do enumeration and then they find out where they can move laterally in Active Directory and then they get your stuff, right? And this is exactly where those AD misconfiguration come in. So this is pretty much every single malware, all of the malicious um, applications that are going on today, this is what they're doing because they know that when they get enumeration of AD, they're gonna find out what they want. Now, if we look at some other things specifically about what they are attacking, we can look at some details that I find many administrators aren't aware of. And one of them is this issue around the SD prop, which is security descriptor propagation, admin count, and admin SD holder. And the attackers are leveraging these concepts to gain privileges in the environment. So let's jump out back into Active Directory and let me explain this process to you. So here in Active Directory, um, early in the Active Directory days, Microsoft found that many administrators would go into the privileged groups specifically, go to the security list, modify the ACL so that they could secure their privileged groups. Well, what was happening is Microsoft was getting increased calls because they were breaking these groups. So what Microsoft did is they added in this admin SD holder. Now, if I decrypt what this means, it's administrative security descriptor holder. So this is the ACL holder for administrative accounts, right? And what happens is this ACL is duplicated every 60 minutes and replaces every single privileged account and their ACL, right? So the ACL of every privileged account is updated every 60 minutes. And the way that the SD prop process knows a privileged account is because every privileged account has an admin count equal to one. There you go, right? So this is a concept that we need to look at both the admin SD holder to make sure that no one injects an incorrect entry, as well as we need to know who is looked at as a privileged account. So first and foremost, you need to investigate these things. And it's not just black and white, you can look at the attribute because it matters on the context. This is where Alcid comes in. Alcid always is looking at context. It's looking at the relationships between objects and attributes, and it only flags an issue when it's the right recipe for the attacker to attack. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say that you have a user that is in the domain admins group, right? You're doing an audit and you realize this user shouldn't be a domain admin. So you go in and you're going to remove Adam from being a domain admin, right? So fine, we remove Adam. This is a good security move, right? I, I think everyone would agree, removing someone from a privileged group is a good security move. But I'm gonna tell you, not everything is as it appears. Because in this case, when I remove Adam, you will notice that Alcid detects a new attack pathway right here in the lower left-hand corner. So if I go investigate that, what happened is Adam has an admin count equal to one. And so when Adam was in the privilege group, Adam was protected. But now that Adam is out of the privilege group, Adam is an attack pathway. So this is a clear indication that Alcid is dynamic and it's giving you attack pathways and helping you see these things. The other thing is you will notice that I have admin SD holder triggered. So that means that someone has modified my admin SD holder ACL and they have injected someone on the list. And you'll notice it's actually called attacker. And I can see exactly all of the permissions that are granted. Alcid detects it 
and tells you about these things automatically. I can send this information directly into your security operations center so that your analysts can analyze it. I can send emails to administrators so administrators can basically evaluate this. This is the level you need to get information out of AD. Now, these types of things actually go further. That's a misconfiguration. Let's actually talk about attacks. Now, attacks are very important because attacks don't always lead back to a misconfiguration. And when we look at some attacks like a DC shadow and DC sync attack, these types of attacks are very, very lethal, okay? These attacks are lethal because in the end, the end game as I call it, is the attacker can get persistent privileges. Now let's focus specifically on a DC shadow attack. These attacks are where the attacker is going to inject a fake domain controller into the replication stream of your real domain controllers. And then they are going to update, right? Notice right here, they're going to update existing objects and attributes and they can create new objects and attributes so that the object is now attackable. And you'll notice that SID history, right? Um, weak password history, um, admin SD holder, primary group ID, all of these are things that the attacker is injecting. So then they can now gain access. And what I'm finding is most SIM solutions aren't looking for this. Most AD monitoring solutions don't look for this. So again, if you have those solutions, you're missing what the attackers are doing because these things look normal. These things happen all the time. Now, in the actual attack, the attack has the fake domain controller in the environment, but it's only there for about 10 seconds. Oh, and by the way, nothing is logged. That is a direct correlation to the attack. Because think about it, if a fake domain controller is on the wire, where is the event logged? That's right, on the fake domain controller and your SIM and your AD monitoring solution have no idea that that fake DC is there. So these are issues that we need to overcome, right? And we need to overcome them because these attacks, these misconfigurations are being leveraged every day. And what many of the news postings and the press aren't releasing are the details of the attack. They're just releasing the wow factor of how many accounts were jeopardized. Now, if we look at SIM solutions and AD monitoring solutions, they do play a very important role, right? But they also have limitations. They rely on the event logs. When the event is there, it's, it's too late, right? I mean, if we look at the event log as a AD security when we are driving, right? So you're driving along in your car and, you know, you want an alert to tell you something. And if the event log is the only thing you have, this is what happens. You're driving along, you hit the wall, and all of a sudden OnStar comes on and says, you just hit a wall. Now, I'm pretty sure that no one wants that information at that point. It's a little late, right? But event 38 is specifically, wall was hit successfully. Now, that is not good information, right? But when we look at AD monitoring solutions and SIMs, they also have other potential issues. They can't see DC sync and DC shadow attacks because they're not logged. You have event fatigue, which I mentioned earlier. You have correlation, but correlation is still after the fact. Correlation is just the idea that I can look at multiple devices and correlate the events, right? So now if I look at correlation, yep, <laughs> I've correlated that there was a multi-car pileup between the different devices on my environment. It's too late, right? It, we're getting the information after the fact. So what do SIM solutions and AD monitoring solutions provide? Well, they're great for reporting. They're great for compliance. I give them to auditors and executives to tell them what's going on, but they're really not core security tools for AD because they're after the fact, they're reactive, right? SIM solutions are really good at other devices because other devices aren't as complex as AD. And really where Alcid fits in is Alcid is proactive, right? Alcid is saying, wait a minute, there's a detour ahead. There's a wall up ahead. You need to change trajectory. And when you do that, you're not gonna hit the wall. 
So now when you don't hit the wall, you have free sailing, you're, you're golden, you have a clear path ahead because you fixed the misconfiguration. And the attacker didn't have the ability to go in and attack you because you've already corrected it. So, you know, what if you could see current misconfigurations? One of the things that all Sid does is as soon as it points to your Active Directory environment, it tells you where the misconfigurations are right now. It doesn't matter if that misconfiguration is 10 years old or even 20 years old or a week old. It'll tell you everywhere that the attacker could recon and attack you. Then from that point forward, it's going to tell you if any new misconfiguration comes in. Oh, and by the way, no agents, nothing is installed on a DC. The user account for Alsid has no privileges. It's a standard user, zero privileges anywhere. Even AD monitoring solutions have to have elevated privileges to read the security log and nothing is installed on a DC. That's pretty amazing. All of this is done with no agents and no privileges in real time. There's only a few alerts a day because only a few misconfigurations occur a day. And I can send information directly into the SOC. Okay, so this is the power of being able to look at things a different way. Okay, and now you can see specifically what is happening. Every single thing that all Sid is telling you, every single thing is directly informational, telling you why it happened, where it happened, and what the issues are. So every single one of them tells you that, right? So if I come here to trust relationships and I go into the deviance for trust relationships, I tell you exactly what the issue is around the trust, specifically all the issues around the trust. If I have issues related to someone that can manage a domain controller because they have the wrong permissions, I'm going to give you specifically the details around that. This has extended rights and I'm going to give you the details. We even have the ability now, this is a brand new one. This came up over this, we've had more calls on this for customers than probably anything else new in our 2.7 release. Potential clear text passwords. This goes into AD, all of your objects and their descriptions, or anything that can be filled out really, as well as in Sysvol for any of your scripts and batch files. And it can detect if there is a clear text password. Now you may be wondering, Who's gonna put a clear text password in a description field? <laughs> I got a call three days ago from a customer, has 2.7 now, and they basically found that one of their help desk employees put the password for resetting every employee's password in the description field of their help desk account. And it actually said reset password, and there was the password in clear text. They were blown away. I see it over and over again. So. Allsit is giving you these views. It's allowing you to now take action where you couldn't take action before because you didn't know. But this is in real time, 24 by 7, 365. So you can clearly see that Allsit is giving you the ability to take action before the attacker gets in your environment. You see the attack pathways and you can fix them. It's a completely different view on security but we have to think like the attacker to actually stop the attacker. You also have to detect attacks in real time to shut them down. Password spray attacks, brute force attacks. You cannot stop the user from starting them, but you need to stop them as soon as possible. So that gives you a totally different view of AD security and attack pathways and how you can detect these things. So Hendrik, do we have any good questions? Hi, Derek. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I've got a, a couple of questions here. Let me start with the first one. Um, if Alcid is showing attack paths like Bloodhound, why can't uh, I just use Bloodhound to see the misconfigurations? Uh, that, I get that question a lot. Um, and, and here's the reason for that. So here, here we're back at Bloodhound, right? And, you know, I, I can pick on different queries and the different queries are going to show me different views. And each view has to be 
verified and analyzed, right? So every single view has to be analyzed and you have to sit here and look at them and you have to look at the accounts and you have to look at everything that's going on in the view. Some views are easier and some are more complex. So every time that you are gonna use Bloodhound to analyze, you first of all have to manually enumerate AD like I showed you here. Then you have to go through every view and look at it and analyze it manually. Bloodhound does not have an automated analysis component. And then once you've analyzed it, now you actually have to go in and look at the environment again to make sure it's still there. And if you want to be alerted on it, you have to alert everybody. And if you want this information sent to your SOC, well, Bloodhound doesn't do that. So Bloodhound is great for a point in time. It's awesome, fantastic. But if you want Bloodhound continuously, it's called Alsid because it does all of that continuously and does all the communications. Excellent. Thank you, Derek. Uh, the other question that came through was how does Alsid control the false positives that are so prevalent in SIEM and AD monitoring solutions? So, so the way that, that Alsid works is it only is going to bring something to your attention that is actually an attack pathway or is actually an attack. When you start looking at SIM solutions, SIM solutions are doing the best that they can to guess if it's an actual attack. They don't really look at attack pathways, so they can't proactively tell you. They're looking at the results and saying, okay, is this malicious or not? And of course, SIMs are now putting in AI and machine learning and heuristics, and they're trying to guess with anomalies of behavior. If there is an attack, if there is a misconfiguration. And honestly, there's just a lot of false positives where all said, everything that you see, you need to address. Now, I'm going to be honest. There may be a user that has a service principal name that's in a privileged group, and that application that that service principal name is servicing, the application's poorly designed and the user has to have privileges. Okay, well, also it allows you to ignore that, but at least we told you about it so that you can secure that account to a higher level. You can make sure that the password is, is now protected and it's constantly changed. So those are the types of things that you can do even if you need the configuration, but again, Alsid's job is to tell you about it so that you are aware and you can then take action. Perfect. Thank you, Derek. And then the third and the last one, what does Alsid do to help restrict lateral movements in Active Direct? Okay, so the idea of lateral movement, if we go back to the kill chain, remember zero through five was at the endpoint. Six was lateral movement. And the idea of lateral movement, many are thinking, okay, I'm gonna stop it at the endpoint. I hope that everyone realizes it is impossible to prohibit an attacker getting into at least one of your endpoints. I hope we've come to that realization. Now, I'm not saying throw out your security solutions for your endpoint. That's not what I'm saying at all. That is not my point. My point is you need endpoint security but you also need from that point forward. And what you need to do is you need to secure where the attacker is going to move laterally. Because if you lock down how they move laterally, then they can't move laterally. If you were only looking at the results of when they actually move laterally, it's too late. Does that make sense? I mean, it, it makes sense to me, but you have to know where they're gonna move laterally. And if you can secure those areas, now they can't move laterally. And that's really where Alsid comes in. We are helping you see where the attacker could move laterally so you can fix it before they get there. Because if you don't fix it before they get there, they're gonna move laterally and then you're only gonna recognize they moved laterally. That's the concept of Alsid. Uh, Derek, there's one more question that came through here. Uh, is remediation done directly in Alsid? What a great also, question. Yeah, with also which what? privileges? 
but I think the first, the first, the first question will be answered and also answer the second one. Then. Absolutely. So. This is a great question. So everyone always wonder, okay, what can ALSA do to remediate? Nothing. And we, we will, I'm pretty sure we will always maintain that strategy. And here's why. ALSID has no privileges. Zero. ALSID is read only. Since it's read only, it can't do any remediation. So now I'm going to go back to my discussion of a SIM and an orchestration device. ALSID needs a SIM. It needs an orchestration device because ALSID is going to feed information into the SOC and it's the SOC that's going to do the remediation. And that's where it should happen because most organizations got a SIM and an orchestration device to do the remediation. So you don't need another solution to do that. You just need a solution that's going to be precise, a solution that's going to tell you the depth and breadth of the AD security so that if you do need to remediate anything, the device that you already have is already there. You just need to fill the gap between reporting in your AD monitoring solution and the SIM, which can remediate, and that's where ALSID fits in for Active Directory security. Perfect. Thank you, Derek. I don't see any other questions coming through. Um, so on that note, I think we, uh, we, are, we are done with the webinar. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Uh, thank you very much, Derek, uh, for Absolutely. your presentation. And uh, yes, we will be communicating with everybody, uh, all the attendees. We will also be circulating uh, various correspondence with regards to, to the webinar. And once again, thank you very much for attending. I hope you found some value in it and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Yeah, everyone will actually receive um, uh, a link to this webinar afterwards as well. We will communi begin communication with you of those who are registered. But thank you very much and have a good afternoon or a very good morning to, to Derek as well. Sorry if I could quickly interrupt. There is one more question that just came through. Um, it's the remediation question. Was that gotten to? Yes, it was answered. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Good, good day.